Japan is famous for being a country at the forefront of much technology, but when it comes to money, Japan has always been seen as synonymous with cash, harboring ATMs at every street corner. And while the rest of the world frequently swing their credit cards and now smartphones when paying, Japan has lulled behind, resisting giving up their much beloved cash. In 2018, the Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry adopted the cashless vision for the future, with the aim of achieving 40% of payments being non-cash by 2025. A goal initially seen as unrealistic by many, with the percentage in 2018 being only 24.1. But then, something unexpected happened. A virus spread around the world which led to people shopping more online and becoming more wary of physically exchanging money. As a result, non-cash payments took off. But that poses the question, where does that leave Japan's relationship with cash? Japanese people love cash, and they have for a long time. We will now explore the biggest reasons why. In the West, there is a worry of cash being stolen, but this is the opposite in Japan. Japanese people feel that cash is generally safer than the electronic alternatives. It makes sense as crime is extremely low in Japan. A person can lose their wallet and have it returned with all the money still inside. And continuing the point of perceived safety, Japan is a country affected by countless natural disasters every year, such as earthquakes, typhoons, flooding and more. These disasters often bring power outages, lasting for days, and as a result, electronic money is rendered useless. As part of the essential emergency kits, Japanese people are encouraged to prepare in case of such disasters. Cash is included, alongside food and bottled water. This is yet another reason cash is considered safer and more reliable. Another reason Japanese people keep cash is because of Japanese banks. They are famous for an overwhelming variety of fees and very low interest rates, sometimes even dipping into negative interest rates. Couple this with predominantly risk-averse attitudes to investments and you get people saving their money at home, especially the older generation, as they still remember the economic insecurity brought by the oil crisis in the 70s, economic bubble burst in the 90s and financial crisis of 2007. All of this has led to people feeling a greater sense of security in keeping their money at home. The Japanese term tanzuyokin is essentially equivalent to the term saving money under the mattress, but referring to dressers instead. The money saved in said hypothetical dressers was estimated at 43 trillion yen in 2017. This has led many Japanese people to buy safes. And following the 2011 disaster, after which countless safes washed ashore from the aftermath of the tsunami, water and fireproof models are the preferred customer choices. But not only is cash safe, unlike many other countries where cash to some extent has come to be seen as a nuisance, in Japan cash is seen as convenient to consumers. And the reason for this is that the system has been designed that way. Online retailers offer cash on delivery services, and many companies, as well as the government, issue payslips with a barcode that can be scanned at convenience stores and then paid in cash. Most people don't perceive there being drawbacks to cash because the system has been designed to make it as convenient as possible. But even if it has been made convenient, it is an incredibly expensive system, which is why both banks and the government focus on transitioning to more cashless payments. The annual cost of maintaining the infrastructure for cash payments has been estimated to about 2.8 trillion yen. A part of this is the cost of maintaining ATMs, of which there in 2016 were as many as 200,000. But even so, some banks still manage to earn money on exorbitant fees. For example, 99% of seven banks' net profit of 26.1 billion yen was earned from ATM fees. 99% which might be part of the reason why there isn't one united front for the change towards electronic payments. As the number of electronic payments increases, it is not without concerns, the first of which is for small business owners. In Japan, they quite literally are the backbone of the economy, as 3.58 million small and medium-sized enterprises account for 99.7% of all companies in the country. Walk down a small street in Tokyo and you will see an incredible amount of small different restaurants and shops tightly packed together. Many such small establishments, however, either cannot afford or refuse to pay heavy credit card charges, and that leaves cash. Generally, that is not an issue, as most people carry cash anyway. 
and another reason such small businesses stick to cash is so they can claim losses or minimal profits for tax reasons. So even if a consumer has credit cards or the necessary apps to pay, they might not be able to use them at a local store. And conversely, even if small businesses have a desire to implement electronic payments, it can be difficult to know which to use. Until now, the terms non-cash payments and cashless payments, etc. have been used repeatedly. What they specifically refer to when speaking of Japan are credit and debit cards, QR codes and e-money. E-money is a contactless payment method based on NFC technology used to pay with your phone or with prepaid e-money cards like Suica or Pasmo where you add money to your card and then you're able to use it for trains, convenience stores, and so on. Among cashless options, credit cards continue to be the largest source of cashless payments by far, followed by QR codes, which for the first time in 2022 grew larger than e-money and includes apps such as PayPay, LinePay, RaktenPay, and others. QR code payment methods have exploded in popularity due to heavy promotion from companies and because companies have addressed the financial concerns of small business owners, with the setup cost near zero. PayPay gave customers generous discounts and made it free for businesses to accept payments for the first several years. As a result, they now control 45% of the QR code payment market. The biggest reason Japanese people have begun using these apps is for reward points and discounts. Following the most recent tax hike in October 2019, the Japanese government introduced a reward point system for customers using cashless payment methods at small and medium-sized businesses, as well as food service establishments. The purpose of the measure was to stimulate consumption following price increases. Even as non-cash payments rise, cash has also risen. If you look at this graph, you will see an increasing amount of both banknotes and coins continuing into 2021. Now looking at this graph, you will see that the areas with major cities have comparatively less demand for cash, hinting at a difference between cashless adoption in cities versus the countryside, as well as showing an overall continued demand for cash. But how can both cashless payments and cash be an increasing demand at the same time? There are two possible reasons. First, for both e-money and QR code payments, you can fill up the related accounts using cash, which is a method many use. As a common concern among Japanese people is overspending with cashless payments, and so for those, it is preferred to hold a limited balance as opposed to connecting one's account directly to a credit card. This means that while the number of QR code payments has exploded and e-money continues to grow, Cash is still present in a supporting role. Second, as touched on earlier, Japanese people are generally averse to risky investments, and with abysmal interest rates, people prefer to hold cash, in part because it also brings a sense of security in times of uncertainty, such as COVID. The Japanese government might be said to be the main advocate for non-cash payments. They've implemented a series of systems to incentivize the use of non-cash payment methods. Among these are the point systems and discounts mentioned earlier, but most significant is the government's move to pay salaries digitally. This hasn't been possible so far, as Japan's Labor Standards Act directs employers to pay all wages in cash. The Labor Ministry, with the support of labor unions, managed to lift the ban, and for those who agree to receive a part of their salary virtually, they're allowed to hold up to 1 million yen in their digital salary wallets. Should the online operator go bankrupt, the balance will be refunded to the consumer, same as receiving an amount of your deposit if a bank went bankrupt. Even so, many companies are apprehensive about welcoming this change, but as a result of both COVID and the government's proactive measures to transition the country's payment methods, Japan reached a record high 36% of payments being non-cash in 2022, and are more than on track to clear their goal of 40% by 2025. Japan is a thoroughly interesting case, as they continue using cash heavily, even while transitioning to more cashless options. So while Japan's relationship with cash might look uncertain from the outside, it is still going strong, for now.